Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. NBAA's 2017 convention concludes as a strong, meaningful show. Scale test flies unique Model 401 and new commercial hot air balloon safety program. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's October 16th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The NBAA claims that its 2017 NBAA base event was an all-around success, despite some reports of soft attendance and a lack of major news announcements. This year's show was special in many ways, said NBAA President and CEO Ed Bolin. We celebrated NBAA's 70th anniversary and how our industry is stronger when we work together. We gathered in the company of aviation leaders and legends like Captain Sully Sullenberger and Captain Jim Lovell. We saw the launch of exciting new products and we brought a citywide convention to Las Vegas, which the city welcomed with open arms. The event featured about 1,100 exhibitors, including more than 100 new exhibitors. Attendees represented all 50 U.S. states and dozens of countries. With about 100 aircraft on static display, the Bombardier Global 7000, Gulfstream G600, and Pilatus PC24 made their debut at the show. Miracle on the Hudson Hero Pilot, Sullenberger, and Astronaut Lovell spoke out against air traffic control privatization during the show's opening sessions, and in a special NBAA video urging aviation professionals to use the website atcnotforsale.com to tell Congress to oppose ATC privatization. NBAA is looking forward to 2018 when NBAA base returns to Orlando, Florida, October 16th through 18th, 2018. Scale Composites has confirmed the first flight of its most recent project, Experimental Aircraft Model 401. Scale work with a proprietary customer to build two vehicles to demonstrate advanced, low-cost manufacturing techniques and to provide aircraft for research flight services to industry partners and the United States government. The two vehicles were designed to be identical in outer mold line and performance, with each aircraft powered by a single Pratt & Whitney JTD-15D5D engine with 3,045 pounds of thrust. The vehicles are capable of flying Mach 0.6 with a service ceiling of 30,000 feet and have a wingspan of 38 feet and are 38 feet long. They have an empty weight of 4,000 pounds and a maximum takeoff weight of 8,000 pounds with an endurance of up to three hours. Aaron Kasbeer, project engineer, said, This is such an exciting time for us. Scaled is at the forefront of experimental aircraft development, and I am fortunate enough to have a front row seat. This successful first flight is the beginning of the flight test phase for vehicle number one. The Scale team plans to continue envelope expansion on the first aircraft as they move toward first flight of the second Model 401 vehicle. After the break, new commercial hot air balloon safety program. Progressive Aerodyne's Sea Ray Elite offers turbocharged Rotax Power and Garmin G3X Touch Avionics. Incredibly well equipped, you can fly away in this best in category Amphib for less than $160,000. Visit SeaRay.com for more details. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of the Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aerold-news.net. 
after a July 2016 balloon accident in Lockhart, Texas that caused 16 fatalities. The FAA took proactive steps to increase the safety of hot air balloon tourism. As the result of a year-long FAA call to action with the commercial hot air balloon industry, the Balloon Federation of America has developed an Envelope of Safety Accreditation Program for Balloon Ride Operations. Consumers can use the program to select a ride company or pilot that strives to reach a higher safety standard and move the agency applauds. To meet the BFA's program requirements, company pilots of balloons that are capable of carrying more than four to six passengers, more than four to six passengers must be commercially certificated for 18 months, have a specified amount of flight experience, and hold an FAA second class medical certificate. Pilots also must pass a drug and alcohol background check, have attended a BFA sanctioned safety seminar within the last 12 months, and be enrolled in the FAA WINGS program. The BFA will verify this information annually and will check the safety background of pilot applicants by researching FAA accident incident data. The FAA believes the BFA program will enhance safety and professionalism and will allow consumers to be better informed before they choose a commercial balloon ride operator. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Errol Video of the Week. Final lift off and left. Check out this commercial spot produced by the National Consumers League entitled Congress Shouldn't Give Big Airlines Control Over Our Air Traffic Control System. Search Congress Shouldn't Give Big Airlines Control Over Our Air Traffic Control System on YouTube. After the break, Frontier Pilots enter second year of mediation. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristol Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristol is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. With so much news coming around the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. More than 1,100 Frontier Airline pilots represented by ALPA entered their second year of federal mediation without a new contract. On October 4th, 2016, the National Mediation Board approved a request from ALPA and Frontier Management to assign them a federal mediator to help jumpstart their stalled contract talks. But after a year of work with the NMB, the two sides are still far apart on economic issues. In 2015, GAO reported that the Office of Commercial Space Transportation faced challenges associated with the growth of the commercial space launch industry, such as licensing more launches. To help meet these and other challenges, such as updating regulations, some industry stakeholders and others suggested that the OCST should be moved back to the Office of the Secretary of Transportation. A second series 400 Twin Otter has been sold to the government of Panama for use by the Servicio Nacional Aeronaval Air Group based in Cocole, Panama. The aircraft is scheduled for delivery in December 2017 and will be utilized to support the agency's humanitarian aid missions throughout the country. The U.S. Navy has awarded a contract valued at over $2.5 million to Environment for the continuation and expansion of its Black Wing Small UAV program. The contract includes orders for multiple Black Wing vehicles, sensor payloads, and refurbishment kits. The initial set of vehicles are anticipated for delivery by May 2018 and final delivery anticipated by November 2018. 
Honeywell is celebrating a major milestone across its fleet of aircraft engines with more than 225 million flight hours accumulated over the HDF 7000 turbofan, the TFE 731 turbofan, and the TPE 331 turboprop product lines. Honeywell's history with gas turbine engines began in 1945 when the legacy company Garrett Corporation developed its first auxiliary power unit. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. The FAA's Drone Advisory Committee is struggling to reach a consensus on how civilian drones should be tracked by the government delaying the commercial expansion of the use of the aircraft. Among the key issues that are causing concern is which drone models should be required to have radio tracking beacons most of the members of the committee would not sign on to the final report submitted to the FAA last week, according to sources familiar with the discussions. The sources, who were not authorized to discuss the report, which has not yet been released publicly by the FAA, said that there were many differences of opinion among the group. Hobbyists, law enforcement, and other part of the quickly expanding drone industry took contrary positions, they said. The disagreement is seen as a setback for the industry. It has put on hold the FAA's plans to release a proposal allowing drone flights over people, which is opposed by law enforcement agencies. In an emailed statement, the FAA said it will review the advisory committee's report and its findings carefully. Well, that's the program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. And do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories. Anytime at aerol-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow.